Hello and uh, welcome here at Le Studio Le Manoir. My name is Patrice, I'm a Dolby Atmos Music Mixer. And in this video, I will show you a few things about the newly released Dolby Atmos Composer from Fiedler Audio. Uh, before we start, a few things to let you know. First of all, this video will only cover how to use the Dolby Atmos Composer with Reaper and the few problems that uh, may occur specifically with Reaper. Uh, so I won't go into the details of the plugins themselves because for that you have the Fiddler Audio website. There are plenty of great videos there to learn how to work with those plugins. So I will just address the issues with Reaper. That's number one. Number two, uh, Fiddler Audio does not know that I'm doing this video. Uh, they don't know me. I'm not endorsed. This is an independent review and I actually uh, bought a license for the full version of the Dolby Atmos Composer. And last but not least, Fiddler Audio uh, says that their system will work with any DAW. That's true, but it's still worth mentioning that un unlike common misbelief, the Dolby Atmos production suite for, from Dolby also works with any DAW. So let's go now. Uh, let's turn to the screen. And as you can see, I have a very basic Reaper session. I took a few drum tracks from a, a track I'm wor currently working on. So here is what it sounds like. It's, I just took the drums uh, from it. Or, well, you can call that drums. Uh, anyway, so the first thing to do if we want to mix this song in Dolby Atmos, the first thing to do will be on the master bus for the moment it's really a default reaper session so the master has only two channels we will change that in a moment and i have inserted the dolby atmos composer and you can hear the sound because the dolby atmos composer is bypassed but if i turn to the composer itself and enable it then the sound disappears uh, which is normal uh, the way it works, it's actually replacing the DAW's main mixer and using its output for monitoring. So at the moment, as we can see on the composer, there's no audio coming into it. Uh, so of course it cannot output anything. So let's start by, for instance, if I want to, uh, let me just bypass it beforehand. And so if I want to listen, say, to my um, 808 snare drum, so it's here, I can change its volume uh, and do the usual things. Uh, but if I enable the Dolby Atmos Composer, of course, nothing comes to it. So if I want my 808 snare to get to the Dolby Atmos Composer, what would seem to be the easy way to do it would be to add as a plugin the Dolby Atmos Beam, uh, from also from Fiddler Audio, they come together, Dolby Atmos Composer and the Dolby Atmos Beam. And if I add the Dolby Atmos Beam on my snare drum track, I can instantly see it appearing in the Dolby Atmos Composer. And if I hit play, then I find my snare back. And we can see that for the moment, by default, the Dolby Atmos Composer will use the headphones output, which means a stereo output. And also by default, it's on binaural. So that will fit all of you who may work simply with headphones directly from the, the computer or laptop. Uh, but if I turn this off, uh, then it will automatically, because it, that's the pro version, this version, uh, it will enable the speakers so well the result is basically the same uh, and if i open my master track in uh, reaper i can see that now the sound is going through there uh, and the the main output uh, is used but of course at the moment i only have in the routing of my master track it's only a two channel so it will only be able to reproduce the sound coming out from the Dolby Atmos Composer 
uh, on the outputs one and two so i want to change that and as i my configuration is um, a 7.1.4 i need to make my master track a, a 12 channels output so this is done and now if i move uh, my snare drum or as it's a snare drum i don't really need to be left and right uh, because it's a it's a mono track you can see the waveform behind uh, so and as you know reaper doesn't know uh, mono tracks any track is a minimum of two channels and not one uh, so i can hit the mono button on the dolby atmos beam and then automatically it will react to that and send it to my center uh, speaker so uh, this is the reason why you can actually see it but um, not hear it because uh, actually I'm, I'm taking for the video I'm only recording the stereo output of Reaper and now and there's one thing I forgot in the uh, master track is routing I've changed that to 12 track but you also need to think to change the uh, assignment for the, the audio of channel 1 to 12 so now if I hit play I will hear it in my center speaker in my room but you cannot hear it because it's uh, the recording for the video only takes the stereo output so that's where comes handy the fact that I can switch in the Dolby Atmos composer if I shut off the speakers automatically it goes to binaural on headphones and then even though it's actually using the center speaker of the bed it still you can hear it because it goes through the stereo output of reaper and if i move the snare drum in the environment you can see uh, that on the beds it's going to many speakers at once uh, but we can still hear it because we are um, at the moment listening in binaural and if you want to listen in stereo rather than binaural for using the speakers for instance then you can do it exactly the same way and use speakers or headphones so that's a thing but few notes if someone at Fiddler Audio ever sees this uh, I've noticed a couple of issues here uh, which are if I turn this off then the speakers will automatically be selected to the 7.1.4 which is my default and if I turn this off then it goes back to the headphones but if with the headphones enabled I turn the speakers on it's not um, setting the headphones to off which means that in the stereo channels uh, we have a sum that is made of both the speakers and the headphones so that's quite confusing so this is something that you may want to address and it, it goes and the same goes in the other way around if I'm in the speakers I turn them off and I have the headphones automatically on and if I turn this off I have the speakers automatically on but now if I add the binaural um, it's it's adding and not replacing which is not I think what you want to do but I take this opportunity to say that something that would be for someone like me at least very useful is to actually have both at the same time but in a way and I couldn't find maybe there is but I, I couldn't find a way to say that I want to send the binaural mix to a different output uh, and use output 1 to 12 for instance for my 7.1.4 speaker setup and use that's what I'm doing with the Dolby software uh, using outputs of my audio interface uh, 15 and 16 uh, for the headphones so in that way I always have my headphones at hand I just have to put them on uh, lower the volume on my um, controller and so I can listen to the binaural mix and put down the headphones and raise the volume or actually hit just one touch of a button to go back to my reference level mixing volume 
and so it, it makes it easier or if someone is with me in my control room and wants to hear the binaural when I'm listening to the song to the, on the speakers uh, I can do it uh, at once. Uh, as I said I changed in Reaper the master track to 12 channels but in the case that a DAW is not able to do that or for some reason you don't want to do that and keep your two channels uh, you can possibly send directly the output of the Dolby Atmos Composer uh, to your interface but be aware that if you're using the same interface uh, with the same channel assignments uh, of course there will there will be a, a sum that will be made and that can be uh, confusing so uh, make sure that I think that the best way to go is to only listen to one of the two outputs at the time and not both at once uh, unless you know exactly what you do. So uh, now I, we have this uh, snare drum which is a sign that's very good and uh, one thing that can be problematic now and the first problem you will encounter the, the way I assigned things is that if I want to change the volume of my snare drum I can't and of course it's quite logical because all the plugins that you may add on a given track come before the fader and the volume here is the one sending the volume to the Dolby Atmos composer that does the, the Atmos mix uh, and of course we don't want that so that's why setting the Dolby Atmos beam on the audio track is not the way to go so I will remove that and so it's removed from the Dolby Atmos composer and uh, there are two ways to handle that the first one would be but I won't do it now because uh, that's not what I would advise to do uh, is to create a parent track and so the snare drum would be the child track of my parent snare and then I would put the Dolby Atmos Beam plugin on the parent track so I could uh, use the volume here uh, to actually make my mix and make my automation if any on my audio track that's not a good idea uh, so actually what is best in my opinion is to create a bus so I can call this DA for Dolby Atmos uh, 808 snare uh, that's my bus and um, on this bus I will route my 808 snare like so and on the bus I will insert the Dolby Atmos beam so now I have my Dolby Atmos beam I will set it back to mono um, and this beam a great thing by the way uh, with the Dolby Atmos beam is that you can open the beams straight from the Dolby Atmos composer and that's really really handy um, and so I can have my Dolby Atmos beam now and if I'm playing my snare track then I can have my volume acting again and work on my audio tracks and possibly add the plugins I want on the audio. Uh, another, another plugin that I could have put before of course the Dolby Atmos Beam must be the last plugin in the chain uh, and another plugin that I could have put uh, before that would be for instance a limiter uh, in order to make sure that however hard I may pushing the snare drum into my Dolby Atmos Beam it will not peak. Uh, that's a solution I'm doing that sometimes because basically this setup with buses is exactly what I'm doing with the Dolby Atmos production suite anyway uh, so I think that's why I think it's the way to go but there's always a but let's get let's get rid of this bus um, <coughs> there's always a but uh, which is that for this example I have only a few tracks but what if I received a song to mix with like tens of tracks that would be quite uh, tedious to do that bus setting for each and every track uh, but fortunately we are in 2023 and I could 
with the help of uh, ChatGPT, uh, create a script because I, I, I'm okay with programming on the side. I do much programming on the side for other things, but I had never uh, scripted for Reaper uh, so far, but I did create a script uh, that will do just that. And I will put the link in the description, of course, to the GitHub uh, page for that. And with that script, I can simply select the tracks that I want to be bust to the Dolby Atmos Composer. Uh, so that will be all the tracks, except I have here uh, two toms that are children of the parent. So I just want the parent to go to the Dolby Atmos Composer. And so I can then add, this is my script, add Dolby Bus. Uh, I, and as you can see, I added a shortcut for that option, Control D in my case. Uh, and if I run the script, then the script created the uh, all the buses and as we can see they appeared instantly in the Dolby Atmos composer so if I hit play now then I find my whole mix again and I can um, if I want to let my snare louder I can still adjust it the way I want so that's good news number one, but as soon as we've done that, we encounter a problem, which you can see is that I want to adjust something on my snare and say that uh, I need to listen to it in solo. I hit solo, nothing happens. This is quite normal. Unfortunately, uh, because of the way that Reaper has a very smart way to handling solos, which is very unlike the other DAWs, at least the ones I know, um, because in the other ones, such as Pro Tools, for instance, when you solo track with a solo in place, uh, what it does is actually mutes all the tracks, all the other tracks, like an analog console would do. Um, Reaper uses a different system which is great in many ways but not in this case of course you could tell me that we could try an option to use the solo in front maybe that would lower the volume on all other tracks but unfortunately it does nothing like that um, so it's not an option either to use uh, the uh, solo in front so you can uncheck that and also the solo ignore routing, which is, I believe is the same than solo in front, but there's a solo ignore routing you can have with the alt key, uh, but no, it's not, it's not happening either. So we have a problem here. Uh, and I went back to chat GPT to try to make a script uh, that would mimic the way Pro Tools, for instance, works, which would be that when I'm soloing a track, uh, all the other tracks are muted. So this is why my buses, uh, when they're created by the script, are on the solo safe mode, because we don't want those ones to be muted. So we need to have a way uh, to say that you don't mute to the script, don't mute the tracks that are on solo safe mode, the same applies for your effect returns, for instance. Um, and uh, another difficulty with that script is that it will need one more track that I will create right now. And we need one muted track. And actually this script, which mimics the Pro Tools behavior for the solo is actually made of two scripts. Uh, one is doing the actual job of muting and unmuting the tracks. Uh, and uh, the other one is just a toggle to start and stop it because the main script, when it will be started, uh, will run all the time and examine all the tracks every like 50 milliseconds uh, to check whether there is a track in solo or not. Uh, and we don't want that for normal operation, so that's why I wanted a way to start and stop it and only use it when I need. So for this one, I, I made a also a shortcut for the toggling script, start and stop. So if I'm running it, uh, 
now there's a window saying solo mutes all other tracks so that's what should happen and as we can see what the plugin does actually what the script uh, does actually it first check if there are muted tracks in order to save them into a file so it's a quick write on the hard drive and that's why we need at least one track which is permanently muted uh, if not the, the script won't, won't work uh, and so and you can have uh, if you solo a parent track the script knows that there are children and children are not muted uh, same applies if you solo a children track a child track then the, the parent track is not muted so that's uh, basically uh, how it works and so now if I want to solo say my toms for instance I can have yes I can have uh, my terms uh, soloed or even uh, only uh, one of them uh, or my snare drum and of course you can solo uh, several tracks so this one is not unmuted but the way Reaper's solo works is that when you solo a track you will hear it even if it's muted so that's why I didn't care too much about that and then if you unsolo all tracks like the solo clear uh, everything will come back so you can actually uh, work with this uh, system and uh, well I think that's about all the things that I needed to show uh, for uh, today for the rest as I said the website of Fiddler Audio and the link is in the description has plenty of videos which will help you getting up and running in no time so that's it for today thanks a lot for watching this video and see you soon